Hello everybody, this is Gwyneth Isaac speaking here. Um, I've just finished reading uh, Run Baby Run. I think I mentioned the other day that I was in the middle of it. And i got something to uh, tell you fellas, okay? <sighs> A long time ago, when I was in university, I studied geography and environmental science, okay? And a really, really important part of that was, um, or in my humble opinion, was human ecology. I got to learn a great deal about cultures from all over the world. And you know something? One thing I realised in that course of study was that a place is what you make it. Okay? A place comes to reflect the people who live there. So what does that mean? Well, if they are people who have a beautiful spirit, their instinct will not be to live in a rubbish pile. Okay? Gradually, you can get a wounded person, deeply wounded, PTSD, you name it, somebody with real issues. Life might get on top of them, okay? But they're going to get over it. They're going to heal. They really are going to heal. Um, and they're going to improve the place where they are. Now, an example of this you think how can one person possibly make a difference you know especially if you're looking at some of the hell holes that are to be found all across the world like haiti you know that thing um of that guy and he, he, it's just become a meme all over the internet Conan O'Brien drinking his drink in the um, <laughs> in the one last look good looking bay in Haiti. Oh my gosh! Look at Haiti and look at um, the Dominican Republic, which is quite lit literally next door on the island of Hispaniola. They live on the same island. They're genetically the same people. Okay? Genetically identical. They started out with the same culture. But something happened hundreds of years ago. The people of Haiti sold their nation to the devil basically and it took a while to manifest I thought Haiti was bad um, you know when I was studying you know about geography I thought Haiti was horrible but you know something <laughs> it wasn't anywhere near as bad as it is now it's a rubbish tip and there's people just living there everywhere and they're just it's full of rubbish i mean really full of rubbish you know what it is they sold their country to satan hundreds of years ago and they have voodoo as their national religion the don or however you want to say it and what's the devil done for them? <laughs> Turn the whole freaking country into a rubbish tip. Anyone want to go and live in Haiti? If you practice voodoo, you might want to. You might think it's wonderful there like Hillary and Barack Obama do. Um, I've seen this over and over again. How can one person make a difference in such a situation? One person can do a lot, okay? Back in the 1950s, there was a kid 
emigrated from Puerto Rico to New York City. He was uh, a little terror. He was a horrible child. His parents couldn't cope with him anymore. They sent him to New York City. He was supposed to live with his brother. He wandered the streets for two days um, before somebody found him and took pity on him. And um, he, had, he couldn't speak a word of English. He was Hispanic, Puerto Rican, and lived with his brother. And then after two or three months, ran away from his brother and you know ended up in Fort Greene which <laughs> which is like the bottom pit of hell back in the day of New York City full of drugs full of prostitutions full of violent gangs that would stab you for just no reason full of violent people who would just stab you just for no reason Everyone who, who could get out of Fort Greene got out of Fort Greene. And um, to cut a long story short, this kid ended up running one of the most powerful gangs in all of Brooklyn. <laughs> and this kid was called Nicky Cruz. He was, he was a little live wire of evil. He really was. And he would be the first to admit that to you. He's just a, oh my gosh, he was a murderer. He was a thug. You know, he was, he, he spent time in jail. He was just, you know, he, he had a rap sheet as long as your arm, as the Aussies would say. You know? But somehow, every just almost every time, the charges wouldn't stick. And then one time they did stick, and I think he might have spent maybe six months or however long it was, a few months in jail. And, you know, that was actually the beginning of the way out for him. But he came out of jail, and but he had the, the advantage of having a very wise prison counsellor, uh, parole officer, and psychologist, all rolled into one. You know, something... <laughs> you've got to think, how could I possibly make a difference? But you can. Nicky Cruz did. But not in his own power. He gave his life to Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, he went. He he a, a street preacher from Pennsylvania, rural area, moved into his district. And when Nicky heard him preaching, on the street corner, you know what Nicky did? He threatened to kill him. The lawn. He threatened to kill him and he slapped him on the face. You know? <laughs> and he didn't just do it once, he did it several times. And normally gangsters like that, if they warn you once, I'm going to kill you one day, you better take it seriously. But Nicky did it two or three times, told the street preacher, I'm going to kill you. You better watch yourself, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to stab you. That's what Nicky Cruz said to the street preacher, David Wilkerson. You know, um, you can read it in the book. You can read it in The Cross and the Switchblade by David Wilkerson. And then Run Baby Run, which is the book I've just finished. Nicky tells his version of the story. Okay, David Wilkerson passed away some years ago. But Nicky Cruz is still alive. He's about 80 years old. I don't know how old he is, probably about 80 years old now. He ended up um, accepting Jesus Christ as his Lord and Saviour, and Jesus did a miracle with that guy. He filled him full of the Holy Spirit, 
And Nikki Cruz graduated from Bible college as a minister of religion. And he helped David to run his uh, mission for a while, which was a mission very much like Archie's mission, was Teen Challenge Health um, in Fort Greene. And <laughs> because he was the former leader of the Mau Maus, the mission got left alone. Yeah, very much similar to Archie's story. Um, but as well as that, what happened was after he left the mission in Fort Greene, he travelled to California and did street preaching for a while and then started his own mission in California. You know something, because of the work of David Wilkerson and Nikki Cruz in Fort Greene, Fort Greene's actually a nice place to live now. Wow! And it didn't happen through human power. It happened because people decided that they were going to stop going the devil's way and they were going to start doing what God wanted to, to do. And that they were going to make some real positive changes in the power of the Holy Spirit. You can't do it without Jesus. You can't do it without the Holy Spirit. But with him, you can change your little piece of hell into a little piece of heaven. And I have seen it over and over and over again. It's absolutely remarkable. Something so similar happened uh, to Fitzroy when Archie had his mission there. It was a hellhole. It was the, the, the stomping ground of every gang you could possibly imagine. Irish gangs, um, Egyptian gangs, Lebanese gangs, you know, and they, they were constantly having turf wars, you know, and the Hells Angels, um, all these different gangs, and they were just, oh my gosh, they, they full on, they were violent, and they were criminal, and they were rough, and they were tough. But after Archie's mission had been there for 10 years, uh, Fitzroy began to be kind of a nice place to be. And you go there now, Ligon Street's got cafes all up and down Ligon Street. Who would have thought, you know? And you've really got to consider, you can make a change. But you can't do it on your own. You've got to have Jesus Christ in your heart. And if you want to know how to get him there, you need to get on your knees wherever you are. And you need to say, Jesus, I'm sorry for all the bad things I've ever done in my life. I need you by the power of your cross. You died for my sins. I need you. Pay for my sins, Lord and give me a new life. In Jesus' name, Amen. You pray that, and then you pray for Father God. Say, Father God, in Jesus' name I pray you send your Holy Spirit on me to fill me and empower me for the work that you have for me to do. And you know something, it's not going to happen overnight. Because it didn't happen overnight with Nikki Cruz. It took years for his life to be transformed to the degree where um, he could do the work that he needed to do. With David Wilkerson, it took years to transform his life. Oh, I just had a dog try and jump up on the sofa. Um, it took years for him to, for his mission to become established to that point. But, you know, it's like the old saying, Every journey starts with a single step. And the first part of your step, of your journey, is stepping out of the devil's kingdom and stepping into the kingdom of God. Then you can begin to make some real serious positive changes in your life because there is a heaven and there is a hell and it's up to you to decide which of those sides you are going to be on. God bless you.
and I'll see you later.